Hello and welcome to another Pinch Tune FPV video. I am busy uh, editing one right now. Actually, I'm cutting it at the moment. And while I wait for the computer to do its thing and encode, I want to show you something else. This is the Helination Gigawatt or Talon Gigawatt ESC. I don't do a whole lot of hype on this channel, and the reason is one, I don't tend to like hype. I kind of like to run stuff that's proven after it's well tested, not only by me, but by others. And also this channel is kind of small, unless you guys help it grow more. And the manufacturers kind of send me the stuff for testing, sometimes a little bit after all the big guys have tested, which makes it less fun. But anyway, this thing is proven. I know a lot of you guys know what this is, I'm gonna go a little bit into detail about it and some technical aspects about it and also things that I do in my experience on how I set it up, how I've been running it and overall the experience I've had with it. A lot of you guys know that this ESC is actually made by Akon. It is based on the Akon 20 by 20, which is one of the very first 20 by 20 reliable 6S ESCs that's come out and it came around came out around the holidays. I think it was November, December 2018. Right after the Emax Magnum 2 or Magnum uh, 6S ESC from the, the the second version of their stack, which was one of the very first reliable 6S ESC. I've ran I've flown two of those, I haven't burnt one. I have some friends that pull the pads off of them. They are they can be delicate in that, in that way, but if you actually put um, do something like this, put some relief, and if your battery gets ejected, then it yanks there, but it doesn't pull the, come on, stop focusing on me. It doesn't pull the pads off of the ESC. The pads on this one, however, are a lot stronger than the pads on the Emacs ESC. Um, so here it is. This is the V2 version of it. Let's get it close to the camera here so you can check it out. Look at this beautiful thing. Don't focus on my face. Focus on the ESC and come on. There. That's what you want to see. There we go. Look at this awesome aluminum machining of this um, CNC heatsink. The V2 essentially is the same as the V1 ESC, except they added this heatsink. It is actually attached correctly using thermal paste so that the FETs transmit the heat through the thermal paste and out through the heatsink. Very, very good, very, very effective. And the look of it, top and bottom, is basically exactly the same. The Talon version from Helination is red. Again, it is the same as the Acon ESC, same, same reliability. Very awesome component, very reliable, very good. So in my experience, if you have been unsure about jumping into 20 by 20 success because you are afraid of braking gear, if you are not breaking a lot of 30 by 30 ESCs, then you probably will be okay with going by, with this. Because honestly, I don't break a lot of gear. Maybe I should be flying harder so I can break more, but I don't break a lot of gear and um, my 30 by 30 ESCs last a long time and I've yet to burn one of these and I have three or four of them at the moment that I've crashed really hard and they've been fine and they are not the ones with the heat sink so it's easier to knock off a fat burn it there's more heat and this new one should be a lot more reliable on top of that it is conformally coated I normally conformal coat all my parts when I'm building yes the wires that you solder on will not be conformally coated. You would have to do that yourself, but the components on it are already sprayed at the factory, which is really good. Very, very good. It's a very good looking ESC. There is a downside to the heatsink, and that is the height, because what happens is that it takes up space in your stack, and if you are trying to build as low as possible or have more space between this and your FC, then of course, this is gonna take maybe about an eighth of an inch extra maybe three millimeters or four millimeters of space, that would normally just be free space. But it is worth it to have that heatsink there because it increases heat dissipation, 
it increases reliability and that heat is essentially what tends to break ESCs when you're racing. They get so hot that all the components and the solder points where they were, um, forget the word, but anyway, what they were, the, the way they attach to the board, they start getting soft and in a hit, stuff comes off, they short, they break, fire. And this helps avoid that. It comes with a cap, which is a 35 volt, 330 microfarad. Stop focusing on my face camera, that's what you want. Not that you have never seen a cap before, I don't think it's gonna focus, so whatever. 330 microfarad, 35 volt. This is not what I recommend you run on 6S. To be honest, I recommend you run 50 volt on 6S. There is some little holes there for you to attach said cap. Make sure not to get it, not to get the polarity inverted because it will explode. So it goes right there. So it's a convenient place to run the cap. You fold it back and then you attach the leads there. But I recommend you actually run even less microfarads, like 200 microfarad, but at 50 volt. Because normally the spikes, it's known that the spikes on a 6S well, on any rig, it's twice the base voltage. So if you're running 6S, you're running 25 volt. What's your double? What's your twice? It is 50 volts. So you want to run a 50 volt cap. Not that you can't run 35 volt. I've run a couple 35 volt caps on these and I haven't burnt one, but it is recommended that you do 50 volts. So if you can't, source them. Plus, this, they, send, they send these small caps, so you really want to want something bigger if possible. This is quite small. And again, if you increase your voltage, you can get away with less microfarad capacitance. And that's good because they don't get too big. To give you an idea, it is a 20 by 20 ESC, but it is not super small. It is slightly wider because of the tab, but what it really is, is a little bit longer. As you can see, there is some overhang past the front and back holes. And I'll tell you the measurement right now. Basically past the center hole, no, past the edge of the hole, it's got five mil. On the sides, it's only three mil. So it is slightly bigger than a true 20 by 20. Like say, for example, this true 20 by 20 Talon V2F4 with pit switch. This cam, this uh, ESC, that's a, that uh, FC, FC, this, this is an actual 20 by 20. See how close to the edge those holes are? This is as small as they get when it comes to 20 by 20. After this, you gotta go 16 by 16 for a micro. And if you put this on top, you will see the comparison right there in size. There you have it. However, this feel, this fits in most builds. I am running this ESC on a FPB Flight Club Neutron, which is a dedicated 20 by 20 frame. There's not a whole lot of space in it. In fact, Mike, who designs this frame, came up with V2, which he calls Neutron R. And he made it ever so slightly longer, I think five mils longer or something, so that there's space for the camera not crashing into the stack, which is the problem that I have. On this guy, I'm running Flight 1. In fact, on all of my Neutrons, I'm running Flight 1. There it is. So that is a millivolt OSD flight controller on top of a Talon. Actually, this one is the Acom version, but my other two have the Talon board, but like I said, it's the same. The only difference is it was black. And the B1 does not have the heatsink, but essentially, same thing. That's the amount of space I have. However, with this new one, with the heat sink, I'll have to go up about five millimeters, but as you can see, the space I have between the top plate and the FC is plenty for me to be able to go up a little bit more. And like I said, reliability, it's been incredible. I don't run high KV 6S like guys that are doing 2150 KV, 1950, 1900, even 18, 18, 1850, it's still kind of on the high end. So I run 1700 KV. I don't find myself pegging the throttle very often. I don't find myself needing more power. I need to 
get faster and more control before I start raising the power. So I, I, I'm on the low end as far as power goes, running 2206s, but I know guys that are running 2207, 1850 motors. In fact, the Talon brand from Helly Nation, their motor is a 2207, 1850, I believe, or 1860. So it's higher than fully the 1700, so you can handle it. Very reliable, definitely highly recommended. Is it more reliable than a good 30 by 30? Probably not. The 30 by 30 board has even more heat dissipation, especially if it has a heat sink, like say, for example, the T-Motor F55 ESC that has a big heat sink on it. It's 30 by 30. There's more space to run heat around, so they might be more reliable. So if you're constantly destroying 30 by 30 ESCs, you probably shouldn't go to a 20 by 20. But if you've been fine with them, yeah, this is a good option and you lose weight on the frame, you lose frame on the ESC, you lose frame on the FC, which makes for a much lighter quad that could be perhaps 25 to 30 grams lighter than a 30 by 30 if you build it right. And that is very good for your flying, especially if you're trying to get better because it increases confidence and you can concentrate on flying the track instead of trying to control a heavy beast. That comes from me because I'm learning a lot, I'm getting faster, and it's a lot easier for me to concentrate on flying a track when I don't have to fight the quad. Um, I'm gonna put this into another build very soon. I haven't decided on the frame it's gonna go in yet. I did order some Flight One um, Arc One frames that Flight One put for 25 bucks. I ordered the ones with the canopy, so it's 40 bucks, good, good price. I might run that on there, or I might end up building more Neutrons. I also have a Impulse RC JS1 by BMS. That's Thomas's frame. I ordered one because I thought it would look great and it'd be fun to build one and fly it for fun. Uh, it is not my typical stretch frame or true rex is actually squished, <coughs> but I thought it'd be fun and I'm just excited to build it and put it together. And that is really good for 20 by 20 as well. Looking at the pinouts, it has positive and negative VBAT, again up to 6S. Then of course motors 1, 2, 3, and 4, current and telemetry. Stop focusing on my face. There we go. You can kind of see it there. There's their numbers. Current and telemetry. And these, i tell you how I run it. I don't tend to run the BL Heli 32 telemetry. I used to a lot when I was doing a lot of testing, but now when I build something, I kind of start racing it immediately. I know the data that I need, and I haven't been running it lately just because I've been lazy. But in previous tests, last year, that's how I learned a lot about how much amp draw on these motors, how much consumption I have on this. So I kind of have a very good idea of what I need now, so I don't do as much experimenting anymore. And I just slap stuff together that I know it's gonna work. So I don't run BL Heli 32 telemetry. What I do is I only run the wire for current so I can get my current reading. There's a shunt resistor right under there. And then I wire that to whether it's the Flight 1 ESC, uh, FC or a BL, uh, ah, come on, I was messing this up. Either a Flight 1 FC or um, Beta Flight FC like this one. And I just get the current reading because all I really need is voltage current and that's it especially for racing if i were going to do long range and stuff like that i probably want more data and that's fine i do it on other quads but not on this one so i just run the wire it's fine you don't have to run that wire you can run just the the current wire and you're good to go so there you have it another key point that i gotta mention is that it uses gummies in the holes listen guys the first time i drilled and ESC to put gummies in it to soft mount it. People were like, why do you want to soft mount an, an, an ESC? That's unnecessary. There's no gyro on it. But I was doing it simply to help the ESC last longer. What happens is a frame twist and when you have that ESC stuck in there in those fixed steel screws, any flex in the frame when you crash is going to flex the ESC and what happens? The components pop off. I learned that the hard way on one of the original BL Hell ES Acons a couple years ago and since then I try to find ESCs that have gummies or that have enough space around the holes that I can drill them to put gummies in it. I don't buy or touch any ESCs anymore that do not come with gummies for soft mounting. It is key in having them last. So I'm happy to say that this one, yes, it comes with gummies. 
so that um, you can sort of soft mount them in there. There's a little bit of wiggle room, and if there's any flex in the frame, it's not gonna bend your ESC and pop stuff off it and catch it on fire and then burn your, your FC and then burn everything and done with the quad. And like I said, very reliable. I just had a crash on this guy where I went spinning after clipping a gate and landed on concrete after going up maybe 50 or 100 feet, who knows. The complete frame was destroyed. Top plate, bottom plate, new nucleus plate, which is the middle plate, arms were broken, four motors were broken. The whole thing was destroyed, but the ESC was fine. Lucky, because it really should have just broken. So I recommend it. I really recommend you try it. If you really want to go 20 by 20, this ESC is the way to go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around this long. I appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up. Like, 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 because it helps my videos get shown. Again, if you haven't subscribed, do it now. It really helps. I want this channel to keep growing so the manufacturers send me parts so I can test them and show them to you early. I don't have to wait until the Albert Kims and the freaking kebabs, I like you, by the way, Mr. Kebab, review the stuff. And then I'm like sitting here for weeks waiting for the stuff. And I'm like, everybody's done it. And I'm like, oh, it's all news. See? Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, guys.